So we're going to take a look at limits involving <coughs> um, infinity. So this is something that um, can be confusing, uh, maybe. Um, but I'm going to try my best to unconfuse. All right, so, um, so let's first kind of write down some important, important ideas, OK? So we already kind of had a little bit of an example of this uh, last time. Um, but let's say you have, um, you have the limit as x approaches, um, let's just say 4. So there's nothing special about 4. It's just on some number. And I'm going to put a really big number up here. OK, how big? What is that? That's 100 million. So that's a pretty big number, right? OK, and then um, here I have x minus 4 on the bottom. OK, now, <clears throat> um, if I am following my st normal strategy to evaluate limits, what do I do? Plug in 4, right? Exactly. OK, now, I plug in 4. So this is, I start this off no different than I uh, have been doing, except maybe I put too many zeros here, but oh well. So what do I get? Uh, 100 million divided by? Zero. 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 Okay. Uh, all right. Now, <coughs> um, I often get to say that this is indeterminate. <coughs> is this indeterminate? Nope. No. Can't. What is indeterminate? Indeterminate, so if you go back here, maybe I shouldn't go all the way back because it's a lot of pages here. Okay, there they are. So this is our incomplete list of indeterminate forms. Um, does what have we got? We got a hundred million divided by zero. Is a hundred million divided by zero in this list? No. 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 Okay. This is not indeterminate. So what does this mean? Well, uh, let's see. Oh, we had us uh, something similar right here. Whoa, wowzers. What was it right here when we had one over and the denominator went to zero? So in this case, it was negative infinity, right? Uh, but it's not always going to be negative infinity, right? OK, so here, um, what's happening? Well, the bottom is getting closer and closer to 0, right? So like if I kind of imagine, well, let's say this is going to 0, right? Uh, what's a number that's really close to 0? OK, how many zeros? Let's say I put. OK, that's 12 zeros right there. All right, what is that? <coughs> that's pretty big, right? But is that as small as the denominator gets? Mm -hmm. No, it gets closer and closer to 0, right? OK, so what's going on with, with, with this uh, limit? Where is it going? Almost. Almost, yeah. So one of the two. So it's either going to positive infinity or it's going to negative infinity. One of the two. Does that make sense? So when you get, OK, so this is kind of the rule of thumb, sort of the, the kind of the, the situation that you kind of watch out for. If you have a constant, so it doesn't matter how big the constant is. So even if it's 100 million or 100 billion, if you have a constant over something that's going to 0, this is this means that the limit is infinity or minus infinity. Okay? And so then the strategy that you use to deal with this situation is different from what we did in the previous problems. Okay? So that's one thing that you have to kind of keep in your mind and in your brain. It's like, okay, if it's indeterminate, do some algebra stuff and then simplify and then plug it in, right? If you have a constant divided by 0, what does that mean? That means it's going to infinity or negative infinity, and you need to uh, do something a little bit different. Yeah? Mm -hmm. OK, so it's important to keep those straight. Now, what is it in this case? Well, um, since this is approaching 4, then let's do from both sides, because we don't know what's going on here. And this is a pretty easy one here. There isn't much to it, except writing down all the zeros it gets tedious. But that's my own fault. OK. All right. 
Now, what you need to uh, basically keep in mind is you need to take a look at the signs of the function overall as x approaches whatever number you're going towards. So like here, if x is approaching uh, 4 from the left, so you want to kind of think, OK, so what, what, um, what are the numbers that uh, approach 4 from the left? So kind of think in your head, think some examples. So like 3.9, 3.99, 3.999, 9, 9, right? OK, so it's like, OK, so 3.9, 3.99, 3.999, and so on. So if you imagine plugging those numbers into there, what are the signs that you get? Negative. The bottom's going to be negative, right? So this is going to be negative. The top is going to be positive. So then overall, what, what, what is it going to be? It's going to be negative infinity. Does that make sense? So this is going to be negative infinity. If you use the same thought process here, what is this going to be? x minus 4 is going to be positive. So then this is going to be going towards positive infinity. And so that's all you need to do is once you know that it's infinity or negative infinity, uh, basically this tells you right here, this tells you that you have a vertical asymptote, right? And so then you need to figure out, well, which, which way is it going? Is it going to positive infinity or is it going to negative infinity? Does that make sense? Kind of overall the idea. Um, so what do you say about this limit then after finding these, these two? It does not exist, right? Because it's different. <clears throat> OK, questions about that? Even oh. if uh, both of them the same, it does not exist. It doesn't exist, but you would say it's infinity or negative infinity if it would be the same. So like if I, for example, <laughs> just to do an, a, a quick side example. OK, what would I say this is? If you evaluate it, let's say you approach it from the left, approach it from the right, what do you get in both cases? Since you're squaring it, you always get a positive number, right? So then what does that mean? Well, this is going to be positive infinity. Even though it doesn't really exist, the limit doesn't exist, but it's better to say it's infinity because it gives more information. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so yes. So the vertical asymptote here is at 4, right? Yes. All right. So let's put that down as, as a definition here so that we, we have it. And then we'll do some more examples. Um, so. We say that f has a vertical uh, asymptote at x equals a uh, if either the limit as x approaches a from the left is plus or minus infinity, or the limit as x approaches a from the right is plus or minus infinity. Can it ever be both from the same side? Can it be going to positive infinity and negative infinity if you're approaching from the same side? No. no. That makes no sense whatsoever, right? OK, good. Mm -hmm. All right. Just making sure. OK, so let's do another example, one with a little bit more um, complications here. Let's say we have the limit as x approaches um, negative 4, let's say. Uh, and then let's say we have x minus 1, uh, 3 minus x. Um, 4 plus uh, x squared. Uh, let's see, how about x plus 1? Uh, x minus 5 and x plus 4. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try it on your own. No graphing, just calculators. <coughs> just use your brain. Do not
noggin. Try it out. See if you can figure out. <coughs> All right. So right here, this. Uh, let's see. The okay. Um, so if you plug in negative four, what do you get? Okay. So I have a. I have a question. What's the constant you guys got? Did you guys get negative 700? Okay, does the fact that the numerator is negative, does that uh, tell you anything whatsoever about the end result? No, because the denominator um, is going to be uh, positive or negative, and that's really the one that determines which one, what, what it's gonna be, right? Um, so, okay, now here in this one, this first one, um, it doesn't say what, um, what direction to come in from, so you have to do both. All right, so I went around and I kind of um, took a look here. Um, you have to be really careful here. Uh, so let me, uh, let's see. All right. Um, let me see, x minus 5 and then x plus 4. Okay. Um, and actually, you can get something out of, um, out of the minus 700 because what do you know about the top, the numerator? Negative. It's going to be negative, right? Because x is approaching negative 4. Um, and so the top is going to be um, negative. And really what you're trying to figure out is what's the bottom, what's the sign of the bottom, right? Because you already know, so from this, so this is important because a lot of students get confused. Right here at this point, uh, you know that this is going to be infinity or negative. negative infinity. It is not indeterminate. It is not more, I mean, it is more work, but it's a different kind of work. Um, but at this point, you know that it's either infinity or negative infinity. Deal? Deal. Okay, um, and so the easiest way to, to go through this is to um, think of what the signs would be of each of the individual parts. Um, well, if you have it in factored form, just figure out what the sign is of each one and then figure out what it would be when you multiply. Um, okay, but you have to be careful because what is an example of a number that is close to negative four from the right? Four 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 four. Uh, 4 .9. 4 .9. Negative 3.9. Yeah. Oh, you guys see what Yeah, so, so it's not that it's difficult. It's easy to make a little mistake right there, right? So this, the number that you're kind of thinking of is negative 3.9 because that's the number that's close to 4 but approaching from the right, right? So you have to be careful with that. Yes, Daniel. Uh, well, you want to be careful because um, you want to be close because if there's another factor that is close to the value, it could throw it off if you're too far away. So you don't you don't really want to you want to be a little bit careful. So, um, but then kind of what? So um, the purpose of plugging in so three point negative three point nine is just kind of a sample point. Um, to get an idea of what's going on. It's not really that you're plugging it in and whatever number you get, that's what the limit is. If you plug it in, it's a tool to figure out what the sign is. Does that make sense? So you can plug in negative 3.9 or 3.99 or 3.999, just as long as it's close to the number that you're getting at. So then once you do that, then what are the signs? So this is negative, this is negative, and this is positive. positive. Okay. So then what's the denominator going to be? Positive. It's going to be positive. So then what is this limit? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Now I kind of ran out of room here, but why don't we, let me just do a little bit of an erasing action here. Uh, let's see. Maybe purple? Okay. So 
So if I approach negative 4 from the negative direction, from the left, what would that look like? So if I, if I think of, so negative 4.1, right? So what are the signs this time? Negative, 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 negative which means that now I have what? Negative. negative, so then positive, right? So then what's the original? Mm -mm. The original limit. Yeah, because it's negative infinity from one direction, positive from the other, so it doesn't exist. Deal? Okay. If they are both going in the same direction, then you would say whatever that is. Yeah? What about the second one? Is there a way to express negative and positive infinity other than it doesn't have a uh, you can, I mean, you would write them separately, right? You would say, oh, the limit from this side is positive. The limit from this side is negative. Um, what would you guys get for the second one? This one's really tough. <laughs> really difficult. Really, really super duper hard. The hardest ever invented. Should we just plug it in? Maybe two over time. Yeah. What's the number? Over 21? That is exactly right. And this is what I find happens a lot, is you learn all these techniques, right? And then you start always start thinking that, oh, I need to do this, and I need to do that, and I need to, you know, do somersaults. But <coughs> what's, the, what's going on with this function at zero? It's continuous. Continuous at zero, exactly. So this function right here, this is continuous at x equals 0. And how do you evaluate limits when a function is continuous? <laughs> Just plug it in and you're done. Yeah. So make sure that you're careful. So that's what kind of starts happening. Uh, it's pretty common uh, you know, throughout calculus. As you start learning stuff, the more you learn, the harder, easy stuff becomes. You know what I mean? Like this is a, if I would have given you this problem at the beginning of class, you would have gotten it no problem. But because I give it to you now, all of a sudden it's a hard problem, right? Because you've learned more. And so it's now, yeah, it's too easy. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So, any questions with with that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Um. What about? Okay, I'm gonna another example here. What's the limit as x approaches zero? Uh, from the right of um, Zero. Well, let's see here. Um, can I do that? Uh, but is it true that the left side is equal to the right side? Correct answer is maybe. What's the maybe? What is the part that if it, I can only do this if the limit is equal to one? If the limit is No, this is the very first thing we did. If the limits exist, right? Um, OK, so if the first limit exists and the second limit exists, then it's OK to break them up. If, if one of them does not exist, like the very first example we did today, right? Uh, one of them didn't exist, so it was not OK to break them up. Um, OK, so this is hard just because uh, we're not used to working with uh, this function. That's really what makes it hard, right, the ln function? OK, well, let's take a look at this. Um, ju let's just take a look at, at this function. What's the limit? What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right 
of just the natural log of x. What is that? So think of the function natural log of x. You know, think of the graph. What does the graph of the function look like? <coughs> just from your pre-calc knowledge. So if I were to graph ln of x over here on the side somewhere, let's see. What does ln of x look like? Uh, it's equal. Uh, it has an asymptote. Has an asymptote, what kind? At zero. At zero, has a vertical asymptote, right? Looks like this. So just from the knowledge of the natural log of x, you can write down what that limit is. What's the limit as x approaches zero from the right of ln of x? Negative infinity. Right. Okay. Negative infinity. You guys agree with that? Just ln of x. Not anything up there, just ln of x. Okay. Now, so this is a little bit different than the first infinity limit business that we were talking about. Um, what if. Um, so here, let's do. Let me. Uh, just to, to contrast here. So if I have the limit as x approaches, say, um, well, yeah, 0 is fine. OK. Uh, um, let's say 0 from the right, 1 over x. This is what we just saw a little bit ago, right, with the vertical asymptotes. So the, the top is constant. The bottom is going towards 0. So this means that it's going to it get really big, right? So think of the sort of the opposite situation where you have, let's say, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you, um, uh, what can I what can I do that won't confuse? Um, well, uh, this won't confuse you guys. Okay. All right. So x is going to in so x is getting what? Big or small? Max. Really big, right? So what's happening overall to the function? It's getting really small, right? So like 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, 1 over a trillion, 1 over a zillion, that number overall is getting small, right? So uh, what is it? What's the limit? If it was zero. zero, right? It's approaching zero. Does that make sense, this one right here? OK. Now, does it matter what this number, if I say that this is 1, what did I have, 100 million last time? Is that going to change that limit? No, right, because the bottom is going to infinity. So it, it'll eventually pass 100 million and get way bigger even still, right? OK, so okay, all that to say now, so now going back to our original question, what is that then? So using the, the knowledge of the graph of ln of x, what's the function? Zero, right? Because what's happening? So what you're what's happening is, so here, let's write this down. So limit as x approaches zero from the right of one over ln of x, this is equal to so do you guys agree that, uh, let's see. So I don't know if right now is a good time to do substitution, but um, do you guys agree that that's going to negative infinity? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right, so, all right, you guys ready? We do a lot of substitutions in calculus, so might as well get used to it now. Okay, do you guys agree that this limit is the same as that limit? What did we just do? So that's a T in case. You were wondering here. There we go. That's all I did. So I substituted ln of x with the t, and then instead of x going to zero, t is going to minus infinity. That's not too bad, right? Substitution. So uh, the difference is that this one's a lot easier to work with, right? The one over t. But what is that? What's that limit? If the top is a constant and the bottom is getting really, really, really big, it doesn't mean it matter if it's positive or negative. If it's getting really big, do you guys agree that that's approaching zero? Yes? Yeah? Negative zero. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> negative zero. Okay, fair enough. Negative zero. That's fine. Um, now, okay, so back to the original question. Is it okay that I did this? Broke it up into two limits. Yes. Why was that okay? Because this limit actually does exist, right? This is zero. And what is this one? Zero. zero. So what's, what's this limit overall? Zero. zero. This is zero times zero. It's not, it's not indeterminate, right? Because it's zero times zero. If it was a zero times infinity, then it would be indeterminate. But it's zero times zero, so then the limit is zero. Does that make sense? Yes, hopefully, a little bit. Okay, you guys want, want to do more with, with that kind of stuff. I can tell. I can tell. I can sense it. Okay, so let's see here. Wait, let me. Let's do some more. Fun stuff. Okay, limit. Uh, as x goes to. Well, let's do that. Let's do zero from the left this time. Um, how about we do? How about we do one over sine of ln of x squared. <laughs> This is great times. All right, how should we how should we approach this? So notice this is this is a, a composition of functions, right? We have a function inside of another function inside of another function. So how should we approach it? Yeah, inside out, right? So inside out is is a good plan. Um, so so let's do that inside. And you can break it up into little mini problems, right? So like for example, so here you have, uh, let's see here. Okay, this one. Well, let me do red since uh, that's what I'm doing. What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of uh, x squared? That's 0, right? Okay, good. Well, what's ln of zero? It doesn't exist, right? Okay. So. Well, okay, let, why don't we do this? Well, okay, so we're okay with that, this, this part right here, right? Everybody's okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So let me do, let me ask you this then. So what's the limit as x approaches zero of ln of x squared? Well, we had the graph of ln of x earlier, right? So kind of th think about it here. Uh, we have a bit of a problem. What's the problem? You can't approach ln of x from the left, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but is that really a problem here in this case? It is not a problem. Why is it not a problem? Because you're squaring x, right? And what happens when you square x? If it's negative, it's, it's going to be positive, right? So... This is actually, um, do you guys agree that this is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of ln of x? Do you guys agree that that's the same thing? So we don't really have to worry about, oh, it's from the left, but there, ln of x isn't on the left. There's nothing there, right? So we don't have to worry about it because it, it, when you square it, you're, you'll get the same thing. Yeah? Okay, now. Um, so, okay. Why don't we do a substitution? Do you guys want to do a substitution? Does that sound like a good plan? 
substitution. Okay. Substitution is is good times. Uh, let's see. So the limit. Limit as x approaches zero. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can put left or right. It's the same thing in this case. Okay, this is a simple substitution. So this is like a fill in the blank question. Where the blank is the blank is right here. This box is the blank. Maybe I should do it in a different color, huh? This is the blank. Fill in the blank. Spot, then you're good to go. So here t is approaching zero. Do you guys agree that that's the same? So as x approaches zero, x squared goes to zero. So we just swap it out for the x squared for a t. Yeah? Okay. All right. Now, uh, let's see. Why don't we do the other one then? So let's, what about, so if I have the limit as x approaches zero, of 1 over sine of sine of x squared. Let's see. Uh, so then this is, so let's do it in two steps. So this is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 over sine of ln of t, right? Oh, here we forgot the plus right there. Ah, oh no, my fill in the blank got broken. Uh, so make sure you put the plus right there. Why is the plus necessary at this point? Because it's not squared. Right, so I took away the square, but it should always be positive, right? So you have to put the positive there. So So, so far so good? Sort of? A little bit, yeah. Okay, all right, now, uh, let's see here. So next question. As t approaches zero from the right, where's ln of t gone? Negative infinity, right? Okay, so, do you guys wanna do another substitution? Sure, why not, right? How do I, how would I do it? So at this point, Pick another letter. W. W. Okay. W. Okay, so what would I do? How would I perform this substitution? W approaches negative infinity. The limit as W approaches negative infinity of what? 1 over sine W. 1 over sine of W, right? That's not too bad, right? So you replace the ln of t with some other variable, so in this case w, right? And then instead of t going to zero, the limit is wherever w is going, that function, that inside function. Does that make sense? <coughs> so now what? Zero. What's the limit as w goes to minus infinity of one over sine of w? Well, uh, let's see here. What is? As w goes to minus infinity, where does sine of w go? So this is this oscillates between what? One and negative one, right? So if you have one divided by a number that's always going to oscillate between minus one and one, then what's the limit? 
It doesn't exist, right? It just keeps bouncing around. It does not exist. After all that work. After all of that. I know. Totally different. Stop. <laughs> Such is life, you know? <laughs> Questions? Does that make sense? The substitution stuff? Sort of? Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions? No? I promise lots of examples. Okay, do you guys want to try one? You guys look like you want to try one. Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. All right, so um, mm -mm. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing. So remember, what do we say? We go inside out, out right? Okay. So what's the most inside function? One over, one over x. x, right? Okay. So then, as x approaches two over pi from the left, where does one over x go? Pi over two. two. Pi over two, right? You just plug it in. It's continuous, so there's no worries there. So. Um, pi over 2. And I guess I should say, before you, I guess, go through this whole substitution business, is you do the substitution only if you don't really know where it's going. If it's continuous and you can figure it out by just plugging it in, and then, then you're done, then you're done. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, you do have to go through the substitutions because what is tangent of pi over 2? It's not defined, right? So you kind of have to look, okay, well, where is it going? Is it going to positive infinity, negative infinity there? What's going on, right? So um, so one other thing that you have to be careful with is you have to uh, take a look at the uh, sign. So here in this case, x is approaching 2 over pi from the left. So um, 1 over x is approaching pi over 2 from the left as well, right? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so let's think about it a little bit more because I hear yeses and I hear noes and I hear I don't know. So, um, okay, so here, let's think about it for a little bit, okay? 1 over x, what, is that, what does that look like? Looks like this, right? Okay, this is 1 over x. Where's 2 over pi? Two over pi is so it's some positive number. So do you guys agree that it will be let's say let's just say for the sake of argument right here? Yeah. So it's definitely not left of zero, right? So it's not negative. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Uh, all right. So as x approaches. 2 over pi. So what you're looking at is this. 1 over x, which is the function, is approaching the number pi over 2. You guys agree? From the? No. Okay, so you have to be, so this is, this is probably one of the most confusing parts. This is a great example. I'm so glad I gave you this one. I was actually going to give you another one that was similar because I, uh, no. I I, it's because I like you guys. That's why. Okay. All right. Make sure that you understand. Okay, very important. These little signs here, do they mean literally left and right. So when we say x is approaching blah from the left, x is approaching blah from the right, we say left and right because the x-axis is the horizontal axis. So it makes sense to say, OK, well, x if x is approaching a number from the negative direction, you say from the left. If you're approaching from the positive direction, you say from the right. But you have to be careful because one, so in this case, you're looking at the function 1 over x, this one right here. 
what are the values of that function? Are they the x values or the y values? They're the y values, right? So when yours, when x is approaching, so here, can I, ah, no, I broke it. Oh my gosh, oh no. How do I leave this? Okay, all right, I won't do that again. Okay, let me just pick a different. Okay, when I say x is approaching two over pi from the left, let me zoom, can't you zoom? Do you like the pinch thing? That is your screen. Well, okay, that's fine. Can you guys see that pretty big? That's good. Let's see. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving on me. I don't know what's happening. Okay, anyways, the point is, <laughs> I don't know what's moving. Uh, but, okay. Just work on it and then zoom in. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, the, uh, so notice that the uh, 1 over x is approaching pi over 2 from values that are greater than pi over 2. <coughs> yes? Because you're approaching from above, right? So that means that there, those values are greater than pi over 2. So this actually should be this right here. Should be from the positive direction. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Okay, so it's weird, but it makes sense, right? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> well, it probably does not make sense, uh, full sense, but but if you kind of think it through, it it does, right? So like right here, okay, here, let me change this. And actually, okay, let me do this. I'm going to do this, uh, the limit as... I'll use y because that'll make more sense with what we're talking about here in the current picture. Okay. Um, so, all right. So what? So what? What I did is I substituted one over x for I substituted y for one over x, right? Um, but. Where y is this, so y is basically this graph, right? 1 over x, do you guys agree? Okay. Um, and then as x approaches 2 over pi from the negative direction, then y is approaching pi over 2 from the positive direction, right? Because So the y-axis, the positive numbers are on top, negatives on the bottom, right? So larger numbers above, smaller numbers on the bottom. So then this should be as y approaches pi over 2 from the positive direction. Yeah? So you don't just instinctively put the same sign in that the previous one had, right? When you do the substitution, you kind of have to think it through and make sure that, that uh, you understand um, what direction you're coming from. <coughs> yeah? Uh, or we can interpret it as because we don't have direct Okay, now, 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 what about, so if we take it one step further, what's going on with tangent of y as y approaches pi over 2 from the right? Well, we know tangent has vertical asymptotes, right? <laughs> it's positive. It's always either 0, 1, or infinity, or minus infinity. <laughs> okay, so if I graph tangent of x, here's x, here's y. So don't don't get confused with the reuse of x's and y's. So this is just kind of the standard uh, tangent graph. So that you're all uh, familiar with. So it looks like that, right? And then uh, let's see. So there's the vertical asymptotes, and then. One and then here's the other one and then here's the other one and just keeps going repeating itself, right? So um, if if we're approaching pi over two from the positive direction, so now I'm looking over here at tangent, right? Here's pi over two. I'm approaching from the positive direction. Where's it going? Negative infinity. Negative infinity, right? 
Does that make sense? So that's so right here. <coughs> x is approaching pi over 2 so from the right. And so this is going, tangent of y is going to negative infinity. Yes? So the substitution here is actually easier, right? Because this is, so what, what's another, pick a letter. Z? OK, Z. So where's Z going to go? negative infinity, right? And then I'm going to have e to the, negative. careful, z, right? That's the substitution, right? Does that make sense? <coughs> now what? Now you just figure it out. Now you just figure it out. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now you just figure out. At this point, it's easy. Uh, because this is, well, there's multiple ways you can think of um, the exponential function. Right? So since we're on the theme of graphing. This is what e to the x looks like, right? That's the natural exponential function. So as x goes to minus infinity, it goes to 0, right? Um, another way to, to think about it is, uh, and this is a, um, an important technique. Whenever you have exponential functions and positive and negative signs and whatnot, so um, you can kind of whoa, whoa. You can kind of think of it this way. Um, if I say, for example, um, move it down. Let's say this would be e to the minus z on the denominator, right? You guys agree with that? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this maybe is a little bit clearer because. Um, so what's going on here? Well, z is going. Hmm, Z is going to minus infinity, right? So then what's going on with the exponent there? You have minus, minus infinity, so that's going to positive. It's getting really big, right? So this is going to infinity. What is e raised to the infinity? e raised to a big number is really big, right? So here what you have is basically the top is constant. The bottom is getting really big, right? And what is that? We talked about it earlier. Zero. That's going to zero, right? So that's kind of another way to, to think about it. Uh, whenever you have exponential functions, you want to kind of think of, of it that way. Cool stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, good observation. Uh, why did we not look any further once we got to this last part, this z business? So here, are we approaching negative infinity from the left or from the right? Doesn't matter. It's infinity. Oh, yeah. <coughs> right, you can't because it's infinity, right? It's minus infinity, so you can't approach it from uh, the left. So at that point, z is going to minus infinity. So it's getting really big with negative numbers. Right? Stuff. So, yes, go ahead. So to change the whole, if the first part threw me off when you're talking about we get some infinity function. So when you're saying like limit of this, x goes to 2 over pi from the, the negative side, so not necessarily the left, because it's no longer the left over there. Do you think we're supposed to graph 1 over x? Well, no, what it is, yeah, I mean, the when we, I guess, when we say left and right, it's kind of a convenient way of thinking because the x-axis is horizontal. So it makes sense to say left and right. But as soon as you are looking at a function and you try to turn that into, well, are you approaching from the left or the right? That no longer makes sense. At that point, you're kind of looking at it uh, above, from above or below. Above is positive, below is negative. 
Yeah, it kind of depends. I mean, sometimes yes, sometimes you don't need to graph it. But you should, I mean, you should definitely have like the basic graphs uh, in your head. Yeah, like 1 over x should be, oh yeah, I know what that looks like. Um, and then you can think it, kind of think it through. Um, and uh, that's really all you need. You know, have the basics and then be able to think about the transformation to see, you know, the situation comes up. But, um, Yeah, I mean, the problem is that if you are always constantly, oh, what does that graph look like again? What does that look like again? What is that? It's like you get just stuck forever, you know? So you should definitely have the basic graphs down because they come up a lot. And so then if you can just pick it off quickly, then you can get to work quickly. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels forever. You want to try to avoid spinning your wheels. Any other questions? For now? Yes. Alright, on the top, the top graph, it says 2 over pi. I see it says fun time. Okay. <laughs> Below the fun times, in the midst of the fun times, uh, it says 2 over pi. Um, I'm having a hard time figuring out where that comes from because every, all the other graphs. Oh, well, that's the original problem. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Um, let me, uh, what would change? Okay. All right, what would change if we're doing the limit as x approaches 2 over pi from the right this time? So what changes? So let's not write down the whole thing all over again, but what would change? The sign on the tangent. So it would be from 2 pi from the negative. That would be positive so infinity. So this one, you would appro be approaching <laughs> pi over 2 still, right? But now you're approaching from below, right? Mm -hmm. So that would change. Mm -hmm. This one would be minus, right? Mm -hmm. And then what would that change here? Now it's positive, right? Because now if you're approaching pi over 2 from the left, well, now you're looking over here, right? And um, if that goes to positive infinity, then, then what is this? What is that limit? That's positive infinity, right? Because now you have e raised to big, so <coughs> that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so then that's just going to positive infinity. So this would be positive infinity. Thumbs up. Any questions? Okay. All right. Well.